My name is Chase and I am nine years old and I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. After talking to some friends, they referred me to a university um, orthopedist that they had been to. So I took Chase and Cohen because he had symptoms as well and they did x-rays and in that same visit um, the orthopedist came in and said you have he has x-linked hypophosphatemic rickets. Through them I realized you know they got this for me these are all the symptoms that I had and I got them from my dad. I never received any treatment as a child. It didn't really severely affect me at such a young age. It wasn't until I was much older where it really started having um, debilitating symptoms. Once I went to this uh, university and they diagnosed my children with XLH, when we went to the appointment, um, she had to look it up online. When it comes to my kids, I want to I want to go to someone who knows a lot about it. I found some articles and then found who wrote this it was, you know, Dr. Carpenter. We've been able to work closely with them and their local physicians to manage their condition. We think optimally. Children with this disorder are generally required to take multiple medications every day. When I wake up in the morning, I have to take calcitrol and phosphorus, and then when I go to school, I have to take two more. Four times a day, our boys are taking supplements. It's a big responsibility for a six and nine-year-old to do that. It has been kind of hard how we explain it to him and try to keep him from being discouraged for little things that are big things for him. I like to play outside and play basketball and play baseball and football. He's very good at baseball and he can put it in the outfield, but if he doesn't, then probably not going to make it to first base, you know, stumbling over, over his feet. It is heartbreaking because he's trying so hard. Where Chase struggles to keep up with his competitors, gets tired more quickly uh, than his teammates. The child is at great risk if the diagnosis is not made early. Multiple and severe bow deformities occur. The game changes a little bit in adulthood. Mild deafness is not uncommon, and sometimes vertigo can even happen and ringing in the ears or tinnitus can occur. Um, the dental abscesses can also uh, continue throughout adult life and arthritis is very common. I believe it's really important that medical students and residents learn about excellent type of phosphatemic rickets because this is our future, this is my children's future. People need to know earlier. We need to be able to detect it. People are going to have the same kind of symptoms that we do, maybe more severe, and they're not going to be treated. And the people that already have it aren't going to have answers. Investment in research in this area is critical. It's critical not only for the patients that have XLH, but it's very important for the people that have many other types of bone and mineral disorders. Much of what we know about XLH, we were learned through a listserv, through XLH Network. You know, I, I watched my wife spend hours and hours and hours reading. Any new symptom that came up for me or for my children, I would also type in and realize, okay, so other people are having this too. The symptoms of XLH are real to me. They affect my life each day. I see my two children struggling with these symptoms 
see my wife struggling with it. What I want to do is help bring awareness so that not only can we have the right physicians in our hometown or the right medications, but that one day we can find a cure.